Ed Husick, Scott Ryan, welcome. Morning. Morning. Now, Senator Ryan, as I understand it, in that marathon coalition party room meeting yesterday on the issue of marriage equality, you spoke in favour of a free vote, and yet you're not, you don't have a strong position for or against same-sex marriage. Can you explain that? Well, I normally wouldn't talk about the party room, but it, it was a, a, an extraordinary party room, and I, I mean that in a positive sense. Um, I think the fact that the coalition party room had a five to six hour discussion on an issue uh, that is important to many of my colleagues uh, is a testament to um, the fact that this issue was taken seriously. And the tone of the debate, as the Prime Minister pointed out, and a number of my senior colleagues have pointed out, was eminently respectful. There are genuinely held and, I believe, reasonable views on both sides of this debate. Um, the view I expressed, and I, I wouldn't normally go into this detail, uh, was in favour of a free vote. Um, I thought that was the issue that we were discussing. Um, with respecting that I have good friends and colleagues with genuinely held and decent views on both sides of this debate, that was my proposed solution to resolving this particular issue. Uh, that wasn't the, the, the view that the majority and the very strong majority of the party room had. In one sense, the government now has a clear position. It's opposed to same-sex marriage and the vote is binding. And yet the Prime Minister in his press conference last night said, oh, if we start again, we might have a free vote by now, and then held out the prospect of maybe a free vote post-election or a plebiscite post-election. Uh, are voters entitled to be a bit confused here, not, to be not quite sure what the government stands for? Well, no, I think um, the point is that um, we have had a position in the past, as long as I've been in Parliament since 2008, that supports what I would describe as the traditional definition of marriage. Uh, the Prime Minister was making two points. Uh, firstly, that that has been the party policy now for over a decade, and I think that's a statement of fact. But he also made the point that he thought that this was the last Parliament in which there would be a, an official binding position on all members of the Coalition Party room. It is important to remember that this position, while a stated policy of the party, which is important to many of our members and many in the community, um, all Liberal and National Party members, other than those in the Ministry, are free to exercise their conscience, not just on this, but on any and every issue that comes before the Parliament. And that is, a, a, that is one of the oldest tenets of the Liberal Party. It was a founding principle. So what this position arrived at last night means is that for the remainder of this Parliament, for those of us in the Ministry, and that includes me, um, we are bound to support the party policy that an overwhelming majority of our colleagues support. Um, but we also defend, and the Prime Minister made this clear, that any member of our coalition party is free to express a different view. If you're in the Ministry, you need to step down from the Ministry, but if you're on, not a member of the Ministry, you are free on this as on any other issue. So the position going to the next election that you'll be saying to the Australian people is next term that we'll have a free vote? Well, I think uh, in the Prime Minister's press conference last night, this, this discussion we had yesterday uh, was a debate about the, the proposal before us or that will come before the House of Representatives sometime later this year. Um, the point the Prime Minister was making, I think, was firstly that this is the, the last parliament in which there would be a binding uh, coalition party room decision. Uh, but that um, going forward we had some decisions to make about um, how it would be dealt with in the future. So the position for this term of Parliament is settled, but it still hasn't been resolved what, pos what position the Liberal Party will take to the election? Oh, I think that, that, that's what I took away from the Prime Minister's press conference, uh, because the discussion yesterday uh, was really about what is happening over the remainder of this Parliament. Ed Husey, what, what do you make of this? I mean, the, 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 the uh, government party room has had a very serious discussion about this. It's settled a position, but it's holding out uh, the possibility of a free vote in the next term of parliament, indeed a, a plebiscite perhaps. What do you make of that? I guess from the outset I respect Senator Ryan represents the classic Liberal position with respect uh, to what he described on the free vote. Uh, that uh, particularly within the Liberal Party, that people should have uh, the ability to exercise that free vote. Uh, but he is one within a party now that I think the Liberal Party clearly cannot be described as a Liberal Party per se. It represents a true Conservative at its beating heart. It is a Conservative uh, government uh, that is not respectful of individual rights, is not respectful of the ability of its own members to exercise its free vote. We get castigated, or castigated I should say, on the Labor side um, for 
the way in which we conduct our decision making process, but how do you look at what happened yesterday and think that that was uh, an ability of a Liberal Party, a so-called Liberal Party, to allow people to not force government to interfere uh, in a quite discriminatory way uh, in the framing of, uh, of the Marriage Act. So there is uh, that element too. The other takeout I have out of this is the way in which the Prime Minister conducted himself reinforces in my mind that um, he effectively governs through ambush. I mean, a lot of people were surprised yesterday that the Liberal Party um, would, the people within the Liberal Party who were very uh, you know, wanting to discuss this and have the ability to conduct a free vote would then have this discussed in the broader coalition party room. People were under a quite distinct impression that this would be dealt with within the, Liberal, within the respective party rooms and that they would not, as Christopher Pine says, uh, be branch stacked. Uh, and I, I just find on so many occasions that the Prime Minister acts, he either ambushes his cabinet by not taking proposals to cabinet, he either um, uh, organises his backbench to work against cabinet members who have a different view, um, he clearly reneges on promises post-election and, and surprises people that way. This is not a Prime Minister that governs for uh, governs in an open and fair way. He governs by ambush, and this is the latest in a series of ambushes in the way that he's, well, well, he's made decisions. Well, Chris, I'm, firstly, I'm not going to be lectured by the Labor Party on the role of free votes. I mean, it's a special thing to you. I mean, and you've only got it for a certain period of time because the guillotine comes down and you don't have a free vote on this issue in a few years. I mean, the important point about our side of politics is that anyone and everyone is free to express their view that is different to the party position. If you're in the ministry, you have to step down. But any backbencher can do it any time, and they're not expelled from the party. I'm not going to be lectured by the Labor Party on the importance of conscience in politics, given you introduce the binding caucus, you maintain the binding caucus, and Liberals like myself get told by Labor people all the time around this building, oh, I have a different view, but I, I can't even say so, let alone vote differently, because I'll cross the floor. The Liberal Party is the party of everyone from Petro Giorgio to Alan Miss people who have, a, have expressed their consciences different from, the, from that of a party position. And it's a key tenet of our party. I'm not going to be lectured by Labor who are trying to pretend they think it's important when on every single issue that comes before this parliament you prohibit your members exercising their conscience and have a binding caucus. That's rubbish. I mean, I, I have a record of speaking up quite independently on issues that I care about, on, on which I care about, but I also respect the fact, as you do in your side, that you know, when the group makes a decision, the group makes a decision, and that in the interest of uh, particularly uh, conscious at the federal level that you need to have a government that actually makes decisions and get things done, um, that it uh, performs in a way that's cohesive. But at the same time You too, expel people who vote against the, the party line. Too, at the same time too, you cannot... Your whole reason for being, your claim is as a party that you are a Liberal Party, and yet um, on a number of occasions, you have a Prime Minister that refuses to respect that very tradition in the way that he is running this government, and especially on this issue, where he effectively ambushed his own party well, room yesterday. That, that's crap. I mean, Chris, that's just correctly really crap. I was in the room yesterday morning. It was clear there was going to be a discussion sometime this week. There was consultation amongst people. It was decided to do it yesterday. There was no one who couldn't participate freely in the debate. Um, the overwhelming number of my colleagues did. And with respect to the National Party, yes, there are different views held on that. But the truth is, even if you look at what's published in the papers today, uh, a third of Liberals in the room supported uh, a free vote position, but a majority did not. Uh, and so it didn't make the difference. Is it a problem, though, heading towards the next election, which, after all, isn't that far away, that Labor has a clear position and the Coalition has an undecided position? Oh, well, look, I think, again, yesterday's debate was a long and considered one about the issue immediately before us. And the Prime Minister outlined last night in the press conference that we have some work to do and we will develop a position before the next election. So I think there will be clarity on that. The Prime Minister made it clear this is something he believes the people should decide and that could be either from some of my colleagues have proposed a plebiscite, some have proposed a referendum uh, and some have proposed a free vote. Um, so there will be a clear Liberal Party and Coalition position before the next but election. This is a complete contradiction because the Prime Minister had previously said at the a conclusion of the Irish referendum, for instance, that this was an issue in relation to marriage equality that would be decided by the Parliament. There is no consistency from the Prime Minister because he constantly changes his position, not because he's evolving in thought, but because he's evolving in political tactic, because he's playing games. I mean, 
now that he's talking about a, pleb a plebiscite, after having said the parliament should decide, is merely a manoeuvre to delay and avoid a decision that the, you know, when you look at the bulk of polls that are conducted on this matter, say that people um, are quite open to the notion of changing the Marriage Act uh, to accommodate marriage equality. Uh, and so let's just get it done. Is there not a case though for, for a plebiscite? There are people in this community who are passionately opposed to same-sex marriage, um, for often for, for, for issues of faith. If the government simply changes the laws, they might, might feel alienated from the community, they may not accept that view. Whereas in Ireland you had the plebiscite, you had every side got to campaign, and so if there is happens to be change, it's more widely accepted. Isn't that an argument for a plebiscite? It is. Uh, look, there'll be specific uh, reasons as to why the Irish had to take the path they did from a legal perspective compared to ours. Um, and the plebiscite is meant in many respects to guide the parliament. Um, but it is clear that the soundings taken by individual parliamentarians uh, and also reflecting on their role uh, in making laws that should aid and empower individuals within the Australian community and not uh, take a particular decision that impacts on the, the rights of minorities. We are respectful and I, I would have thought that we would take into account the broad views of people in the community and not just rule by, by constantly, by majority in, an in, in a way that affects the ability of minorities to lead their lives. Um, uh, you would think that we could make that decision reflecting on that point and the, the soundings we're getting from the community. We should be able to make this decision as a parliament. We should be able to do it this year and we've been denied that chance.